everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a medication known as morphine. Its brand name is Cadian. Now, before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. The morphine sulfate is a pure opiate agonist and it's selective to the mu receptor. In terms of indications for use, this medication is indicated to be used in the treatment of chronic severe pain in patients who require around the clock opioid therapy. And this medication can also be used for moderate to severe pain in patients who are non-responsive to non-opioid medications. Now, before somebody was to use morphine, there are some contraindications that they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. If a patient had a hypersensitivity to morphine or any other component of the product, they would not be able to use this medication. This medication can also not be used with or within 14 days of a monoamine oxidase inhibitor. Patients with significant respiratory depression cannot use morphine as well as patients with a known or suspected gastrointestinal obstruction. And also, patients would not be able to use this medication if they had acute or severe bronchial asthma and they were in an unmonitored setting without the necessary resuscitative equipment available. Now, in terms of precautions, this medication is on the Beers criteria, which is a list of medications that the elderly population should either avoid or use cautiously. Due to the impaired psychomotor function and syncope or fainting that may occur with this medication, we would want to avoid giving it in the elderly population if they have a history of falls or fractures. Due to the possibility of reduced blood pressure with the use of morphine, we would want to avoid giving this medication to patients who have circulatory shock. Patients should be made aware that adrenal insufficiency has been reported with the use of opioid therapy. Respiratory depression, sedation, and hypotension or low blood pressure may occur in patients using morphine who have cirrhosis. Monitoring of these patients would be recommended, and they should also start on a lower dose and titrate the medication upwards more slowly. Potentially life-threatening serotonin syndrome may occur with the use of morphine. This would be more of a risk in patients who are using other medications that also affect serotonin levels. We should avoid use of this medication in patients with impaired consciousness or who are in a coma. Seizure disorders may be aggravated with the use of morphine, so monitoring would be recommended. Long-term use of opioids may result in a decreased level of sex hormones, so this may result in a decreased interest in sex or impotence. Elderly debilitated patients will be at more of a risk of developing respiratory depression, especially during dose initiation and dose increases. And finally, serious withdrawal symptoms may occur in patients when the medication is stopped abruptly or the dose is decreased significantly if they are physically dependent on opioid medications. Now, once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings and they start to use morphine, there are some different dosage forms that they may use, but today we're going to talk about dosing with the oral route. So if somebody is using the immediate release tablets to treat their pain, they may use 15 to 30 milligrams every four hours as needed. The physician would then adjust the dose based on symptom relief and opioid-related adverse effects. As we mentioned, if the medication is to be discontinued, they should not be stopped abruptly. A good method to stop the medication would be to decrease the dose by 10 to 25% every two to four weeks. As with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using morphine, so I'll go over some of those here now. Up to 80% may experience pruritus or itchiness of the skin. Constipation may happen up to 9% of the time or greater, and nausea may happen up to 7% of the time. Dizziness may happen in 6% of patients, and about 10% may develop a headache. Some patients may experience lightheadedness, and about 3% or greater may experience somnolence. And up to 5% may experience urinary retention. Now, some more rare but serious side effects would be an anaphylactic reaction or hypersensitivity, adrenal insufficiency, difficulty breathing, or respiratory depression, as well as some other side effects. That's all we're going to talk about today with morphine or cadian. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to go by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.